Senator Tom Cotton tearing into Kroger's boss for asking the GOP for help to stop Democrats' planned regulations after the chain recently silenced conservative employees. And I've cautioned them for years that if they silence uh, conservatives and center-right uh, voters across the country, if they discriminate against them in their company, they probably shouldn't come and ask Republican senators to carry the water for them whenever our Democratic friends want to regulate them or block their mergers. I'll say this. I'm sorry that's happening to you. Best of luck. <laughs> but Disney doesn't seem to be taking the threat seriously. Despite the promise to quiet things down on the culture wars, Disney's top dog, Bob Iger, says people in power have a, quote, extra responsibility to push gun control. Now, I, you know what, uh, Dana, I first want to address the concept of Tom Cotton getting out there and saying, you know what, we're going to start drawing the lines in the yeah. sand. You know, you expect us to help you when you're constantly, uh, in this case, apparently, there were two uh, employees of Kroger's who were conservatives who got fired uh, because of their beliefs, and uh, then they go to Tom Cotton and say, we want your help. Is that the way to run businesses? And it had, I think that the divorce with the Republican Party and corporate America had been brewing for some time. And I think it really reached a fever pitch when Georgia's passed the new voting laws. And then all of a sudden you had companies like Delta, Coca-Cola, Major League Baseball, um, Coke, uh, I mentioned Coca-Cola, financial institutions. They said that that was a racist vote suppressor in Georgia. And then remember MLB moved yeah, out and then moved, yeah. they hadn't even read the bill. Right. And But they will come to the Republicans and say, oh, my gosh, you got to help us. You wouldn't believe what these crazy liberals want to do. They want to regulate us. They're, we're not going to be able to do business. We're going to have to lay off people. We're not going to be competitive in the world. We need the Republicans to help us. And somebody like Tom Cotton saying, guys, you're going to have to pay attention here and either choose to run a business or to be political, but you're not going to be able to do both and come to me. You know, Harold, when uh, Bob Chapek, the head of Disney, you know, got into that alleged don't say gay law in yep. Florida, Ron DeSantis took it quite seriously, and now Chapek uh, is gone. But now Bob Iger comes in and says he's got his own culture war going on. Why don't the heads of corporations stay in their lane and do what they do and let the politicians deal with the other stuff? Uh, because I think that we live in a, a society where everybody feels that they're a part of what's happening and everyone sees what's happening. Look, I think the Disney CEO has a right to freedom of speech. Uh, and if the shareholders and others in the, around that company, the board doesn't want that CEO, they can uh, excuse the CEO, much like they did Mr. Iger's predecessor. Um, I'm, I thought you were going to go a different direction with Tom Cotton. I, I'm a little, I was disappointed in Tom Cotton. I think he is, uh, on paper, um, as qualified as any person to serve in the Senate. He's a veteran. Uh, he's a Harvard-educated, Harvard-trained uh, guy. He's conservative. I'm not conservative. Um, but the, the, the logic doesn't make sense to me. I know you don't is. shoot. You cannot say to a constituent of yours or a constituency, I'm mad at you. This is like a seven-year-old, so I'm not going to listen. Even though I agree with you, I'm so mad at you, I can't help you. Now, if you don't agree with them, that's one thing. If you philosophically say, I think that's the wrong thing to cut taxes. I think that's the wrong, wrong thing to have less regulations in your industry. I think it's the wrong thing to help you compete, innovate, and win against China. But if all you're saying is you're mad, it reminded me of when Governor DeSantis, who's an impressive guy himself, but when he said he wouldn't go on The View because he thought those hosts were really mean. If you can't handle the they view, are. you can't handle China. And for Tom Cotton, yeah. I hope I hope he steps yeah, back. Really. No, no. Well, he said it. He was the one that said, I'm not going, I'm not going to subject no, he didn't myself. Say, I can't go there. Well, well let, let me say this. <laughs> if you're, I was in Congress, I'd never said to my Republican constituents, if you call the office and you want help with your passport or you want help with a constituent matter, I'm not going to do it because I'm mad at you. Yeah. If they called and said, we want you to vote for a bill that would allow more people to have guns, I'd say, you know what? I don't want to do that. Yeah, Here's why. That. He was wrong okay. in what he said, the, and I think but, you agree with me. What the, but the question is, and, and what Harold's talking about, Jesse, is why not take advantage of the opportunity? But doesn't it indicate that we are so far down the road that, you know, Democrats don't do anything to help Republicans, and the Republicans are saying it's our turn? All these politicians are totally bought off by these companies anyway. They've been talking such a big game about what they're going to do to the big tech. We're going to break up big tech. How many, what's that, a decade they've been saying that? How many years have we heard they're going to raise taxes on the hedge funds? How many years? Do they ever do it? They never do it. Oh, we're going to go after big pharma. Big pharma pays a fine, breaks the law. Pays a fine, breaks the law. What, are they going to break up a merger? Maybe they break up one or two mergers. Lawyers still get paid. 
Lobbyists still get paid. Yeah. They just reapply to merge when there's a different administration in there. This is what happens. You get a senator who's mad. They come to the senator. Oh, really? You have a problem? Why doesn't your sister-in-law join our board? And every quarter we'll fly her out. Doesn't matter. Don't disclose it. It's off the books. Is that how and, and the stock options, they're transferable. Oh, you still have a problem? Because we'll just fund your primary opponent. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, you look like you need a vacation. I mean a fact-finding mission. We're going to fly you to Nicaragua, and you'll have one meeting about an environmental impact study, and the rest of the time you can golf at the resort. That's how it works, Harold, and you were there, and you know better than anybody. I missed out on this. Yeah. I, never, I, never, I, never, I, never, I never had Harold, these things Harold, it's happen. everywhere, and you know it. They have an army of All these right, Greg. lobbyists. Yeah, that thank you, Jesse. Carpet bomb thank these you. politicians thank into submission. Thank you very much. They could do something, right. but they don't. Greg, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> I would I would uh, I would disagree mildly with Harold. I think that yes, it does come off cotton does come off almost as a little kind of snotty or churlish, except that what he's working for is persuasion for the next opportunity. I think he's trying to say, look, you know, we'll try working with us and we'll work with you. But right now it kind of sucks. But I think it's the Igers of the world who are the real selfish jerks because they don't understand what's happening to their employees. It sucks for these employees at these companies because like the top executives are, are virtue signaling or chasing ESG policies yep. or they're all just trying to cover their butts from a media that is looking at them. They want to make sure that they appear compassionate to the media who are very woke so they don't write about my bonus. Right. Because remember, that's all they ever write about corporations is like so and so just got seven million dollars in, <laughs> in bonus. They, it's so much better if they say the CEO, you know, published a book on, you know, uh, intersectionality. But you, <laughs> and, and you think that's what. But then what happens is the brand becomes toxic, which is what happened with McDo with uh, Disney. And now is what's happening with American Doll. Right. They tried yeah. to soften. Yep. You know, everybody knows that American Doll is very popular, but they're overpriced. I mean, it's like a ripoff. I mean, this is why I no longer buy my furniture there because like, you know, just a tiny little <laughs> oven will cost like $200. So anyway, my point being, they tried to soften their appeal by doing this little book telling kids how to transition, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, they're running. Now, I don't even know if they're even responding, American Girl responding. I think they're hiding and, you know, because go over there today. let's go over. Yeah, you need yeah, some we new clothes. Go over there. <laughs> no, we were going to go. Like I said on, the, on his show last night, like, instead of waiting for them to respond to a call, yeah. we should just walk over and knock on the door. Yeah. I mean, can you believe a doll company is talking to kids about, uh, you know, transitioning? transitioning. 